I'm never normally this sweary, so... Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, I'll just go out. Wow, that's a really hard question. <laughs> ah, yes, good point. Are you a doomsday prepper? <laughs> no, I'm not a doomsday prepper. Are you a doomsday prepper? <laughs> Oh, look, I barely get through any day just being organised. No, no. <laughs> I've got a tin of Vegemite and a packet of Sayos there, but I've got a bit of a gluten intolerance. Is a herb garden count as a doomsday prepper? I don't know. I have an emergency kit because that's the business I'm in. If there's fire, flood, storm, whatever, I know what to do. I'm um, not yet that much in, in despair. Overall, I'm a positive and optimistic person. I'm not interested in living in a post-apocalyptic world. Uh, my work is aimed at avoiding the apocalypse. Although I am trying to get more into gardening so that I can grow some of the things in my backyard that I suspect we might not be able to get access to in the future. Can we just plant more trees? We should plant a ton more trees. That's great. Even if we were all out planting trees as, as fast as we could, it, just, it simply would not be enough now. If only that were the solution, that would make life pretty easy, wouldn't it? But unfortunately, it's such a big problem that that's not going to solve the crisis. Just planting trees doesn't properly absorb, it doesn't hold them for long enough periods of time that, and the emissions get back into the atmosphere. Replant the tree, the forests that we've cut down and that will assist in a lot of ways, but it's not the only thing. There's a lot of other work that has to happen alongside that. We can plant as many trees as we like, it's not going to solve the problem unless we stop polluting the atmosphere. It's a short-term offset and it should be short-term only until we can turn things around. At the end of the day, there is no get out of jail free card here. You know, climate science is on the one hand pretty complex, on the other hand it's really simple. If we want to live in a safe climate, we have to stop burning fossil fuels. Like, it's not that hard. Stop burning, phase them out as quickly as we can. Renewables. What happens when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine? Oh my goodness, well there's something called storage. Fortunately, we've solved that problem. It's called batteries. Australia is the windiest and sunniest country in the world, so we've got a fantastic renewables resource. If it's not raining, we still have water. Same. If the sun and the wind isn't blowing, of course we can store energy. At night, when the sun's not shining, guess what? I don't use the grid because I've got a whacking big home battery. We can have a modern energy system that takes care of all our needs more affordably, more reliably through renewable energy. So don't believe those sorts of myths. What about nuclear? Here's another bull story by the coal, oil and gas industry and the politicians they have in their pockets. In Australia, we have no nuclear energy industry. We have one reactor in Australia at Lucas Heights. It's a tiny little medical reactor. If we want a really expensive, really complicated, really dangerous way of dealing with this problem, then sure. Let's go the nuclear route. We don't have the physicists. We don't have the en industry. And to start to build one from scratch would cost us an immense amount of money. It would take a ridiculously long time to get up and running. Because it'll take 40 or 50 years. And why would you do that when you already have the solutions in other forms of renewable, wind and solar? We've got much simpler, much easier, much quicker, much more available ways to deal with this in Australia. So let's get over the nuclear distraction. Let's just get on with the solutions that work. So Leslie, can we get out of this? Climate change is not black or white. You know, it's not all good one day, all bad the next day. Can we get out of this? We have to. Whatever we do, even if we stop polluting tomorrow, even if we stop burning all fossil fuels tomorrow, there is climate change is baked into the system for decades to come. We can't just flick a switch and turn it back to being all good again. Now we are living with the impacts of climate change. There is more coming because our past inaction, the future is going to look different. Quite frankly, we don't want to get any more and so we absolutely must do everything we can. What we've got to work very, very hard to do is to limit the damage and to eventually turn things around. That's going to take decades. It's going to take a great deal of effort and political will. You know, we talk about net zero and we're now increasingly talking about the solutions to get us there. We're all doing more. If we can limit warming as much as we can, even by those fractions, then our actions will be measured in lives and livelihoods and, you know, regions saved. Not just for our species, for every other species on the planet that relies on us, because we're the ones who came and mucked it up. But really, what choice do we have? We will get there. It's a question of how fast we can get there that's, that's really the issue. But we do have the solutions that we can mean we can build, you know, a bright, thriving future that leaves everybody stronger. 
and we are going to do that. I'm Greg Mullins. Kate Charlesworth. I'm Leslie Hughes. I'm Simon. Nikki Hutley. And I've been a firefighter for ooh, over 50 years. And I am an economist. Research Director at the Climate Council. Public Health Physician. I'm an ecologist by background. I get to work with some truly amazing people, some of the country's best scientists, communicators. I was a junior doctor um, working in a hospital in Sydney. The 1994 bushfires in New South Wales and something wasn't right, those fires just shouldn't have happened, but it suddenly got hot and dry, uh, just stopped raining. A guest lecturer come in um, who was talking about climate change and he just very objectively and clearly set out, this is climate change, this is what we're on track for, this is what it's going to mean for health. So it really got me thinking, what's going on here? I was a young doctor and interested in making a real sort of impact. What is the, what is the most useful thing that I can be doing in my career? And it was this. And speaking to other fire authorities, and they were all saying the same thing. It's time to take action. 